we have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. I'm Ann Northrup. And Ricky Nathanson, persecuted for being a trans woman in Zimbabwe, uh, was granted asylum in the United States, and she is our guest today after being honored by Outright Action International last night. Uh, we're very eager to talk to her. Uh, then we will talk about the federal LGBT rights bill, the Equality Act, which advanced in the Democratic U.S. House this week and is headed for passage there, if not the Senate, we'll see. Uh, Trump did unveil his anti-LGBT executive order to allow discrimination in health care against us and others based on religious belief. And, and people don't want to impeach him. What's wrong with them? Iowa's governor enacted anti-transgender legislation, but Tennessee's hate slate of bills is on hold till next year. Uh, Brazil's anti-LGBT fascist President Bolsonaro canceled a trip to New York amid protests. Brunei, they think they're getting away with this. <laughs> <laughs> they say that they won't get rid of their death penalty for homosexuality, but that they won't enforce it until, of course, they want to. <laughs> Cuba canceled the annual Pride March at the last minute there. And another big study confirms that adherence to HIV drugs is 100% effective against transmitting the virus. But our guest is Ricky Nathanson. Welcome. Thank uh, you. Uh, Thank you, Ricky. From Zimbabwe, uh, a trans activist there, the founder of a group called TREAT, Trans Research, Education, Advocacy, and Training. Uh, now in the United States, uh, after being honored last night by Outright Action International, we have a picture, by the way, of the of the of last night. There you are in the red, with the very smart. That's how you go to these things. With Stand the, out with the cast of Transparent yeah. there, and with uh, Beth Brook uh, Marciniak, I think, who yeah. is a a, a a corporate leader, and of course uh, Jessica Stern there on the left, who is the head of Outright Action International in the leopard print. I think I think Jessica thought she was going to the Met Ball with the uh, camp uh, uh, theme. It was it was a, it was a great evening and you told your story of what you went through in Zimbabwe. Why don't you tell the rest of the world here now about what happened to you there? Great. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, so in 2014, I was at a local hotel in Bulawayo, the city in which I live. <clears throat> and at the same hotel, there was a leading government official who was um, he was then, I'm, sure, I'm not sure if he still is, but he was the Youth League leader for, for the region of, of Matabeleland, in which Bulawayo is situated. Um, he had moved to Bulawayo about two to three months prior, and he had seen me before that, but he didn't actually know that I was trans. Um, I think he thought, well, he, he, he thought I was, I was a woman, which I actually am, but he thought I was a biological woman. Cisgender. A uh, cisgender woman, that's correct. Thank you for the correction. <laughs> and, um, he was extremely drunk that night. He was sitting with another man, and um, I think he, he was told he was told that night that that I was actually trans and I was not cis cisgender. Um, so he called me over to speak to him, uh, and I'd met him prior. So I thought oh, it's just a normal um, you know, just conversation. Just wants to say hi. Yeah. yeah. And so what he said to me was, he said um, the man he was sitting with didn't like what I was doing. So I said, well, what is it that I'm doing that he doesn't like? He said, oh, no, well, you know what you're doing. I said, no, I don't know what I'm doing. So he said, well, um, this, this person is from the president's office, um, intimidating that he was a secret service agent. And um, that this, this person, um, if I didn't give them money, they wanted to $20, it was a bribe. If I didn't give them money, um, they wouldn't allow me to, to leave the premises, to leave the, this hotel where I was. So I ignored it and I thought, well, these, these are just drunk guys. And I went to go sit down with, um, with friends of mine. And within 45 minutes, riot police arrived, and there were six of them. Um, 
complete with visors, um, rifles, um, baton sticks. They went across to speak to this young man and he pointed over to me and then they came to me and they said, well, you know, you're under arrest. I said, well, what's the charge? They said, well, just come with us. And I was bundled into the back of this, um, of a, um, of a, of like a police um, van. Um, open, just open back. So I was in the back of this, surrounded by these six police officers, officers <clears throat> riding through the city at, um, it was like quarter to six in the, at night that evening. All by yourself. All, all by these myself, six. six with these six riot police officers with guns, mm -hmm. you know, pointing to me. Mm -hmm. And at that stage, I was, I was like, I was very well known in the city because I ran a modeling agency. Um, I also had, before I transitioned, um, I worked as a company secretary for a, for a big, for Dunlop Zimbabwe, which is like the big time manufacturing, manufacturing um, um, company of, um, Zimbabwe. So I was well known. I'd been in the press for my corporate work and my my modeling and my then sim. So I was well known. That said, I was taken to the um, Bulawayo Central Police Station, where upon arrival I was charged with criminal nuisance for using a female restroom. And then um, in between the, the fiasco of being speaking to one police officer and another one and fingerprints taken and mugshots taken, it was like really chaotic. Um, I was sent to, I was taken to a, um, a side office and in there there were five police officers and so they said, you know, like looked at me and said, oh, you know, you know, but what are you? You know, are you a man? Are you a woman? And like ridiculing me and they were speaking the local language and you know, laughing and so the one took out a, um, um, a pistol and said to me, right, show us what, you know, what you are. So at gunpoint I was forced to strip naked. Uh, and so with that, um, it, the, the, um, the treatment I received, I mean, the, 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 the ridicule and the, and the, um, and the lambasting just became, just became that much greater. Because Not to said, mention the threats. Of, absolutely. Uh, so they kept you in jail for three days. Yes. So, for this. Yes. So, so after all this happened, um, I, was, I was locked away in a cell on my own. Um, but the cell, I mean, the conditions in the cell were, were, horrific, were, were, were terrible. Uh, the, there, was, there was not a single light, so I couldn't see. It was like completely dark in there. Um, I was given a dirty blanket. Um, and this blanket, when I tried to use it, I was sleeping on a cold floor. There's no, there was no bedding in, no bedding in, 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 in the cell. Um, when I tried to cover myself with the blanket, I, I, I could feel like the lice. So I, I threw this, this blanket aside. So I was kept, in, I was kept under those conditions for, for three days. Um, I was in for three days and, and, and two nights in, in, in jail. But throughout the three days and two nights, every time the guard, the, the police officers would change guard, they would take me out of the out of the cell, parade me in front of these people. They'd laugh at me and spit on me and do all these nasty things, um, and then put me back in jail. So the the more the third morning that because the the law in Zimbabwe states that you cannot keep someone in a holding cell for more than more than 72, 72 hours. So I had to go to court. I went to court. Um, so this happened the Thursday, the Saturday morning. I went to court, and there was. The prosecutor did not know how to handle my case because she, she was a young, a young woman, a young cisgender woman, and she'd never in her life come across transgender people, or so she said. And the the docket said I was transgender, and because I had been for for um, for gender verif verification uh, examinations with two doctors at two public hospitals, and they both they both um, said I was transgender. So she didn't know how to handle this whole fiasco. And she decided that um, I should be placed on remand until the senior area prosecutor came on duty because she didn't know how to handle the case. Um, so with that, this young man that had had me arrested was also at the at the court, and he was so so angry, and um, he said at you at, at at me and the prosecutor for letting me go, and he said. Um, that there was no way I, I could be allowed to walk the streets of Zimbabwe after what the president says we are. And um, he said, and he said to this woman, he cannot guarantee that I'll be alive, 
much longer if I'm let if if if, if I'm let go. And, and in the, fact, I, I'm I'm gonna uh, <coughs> jump ahead a little because uh, uh, time time. Yes. Uh, but you were then pursued. People broke into your house. Yes. yes. People so, threatened yeah, you. So, so 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 fast forward to 2018. Um. So after the the so I went to court and then I was acquitted, and then so and then I I. I um, filed a civil lawsuit against the state right. for what had happened to me because they had violated um, at least seven of my constitutional rights as the activist that I am. Um, and everything went quiet and we went to the High Court of Zimbabwe. The case was heard in July 2017. Um, and at the time, the judge indicated that he would be handing down judgment within a month. Of the case being heard, and nothing happened until August 2018, when sort of like there was there was when that the judgment was being handed down. Mm. Um, at that time, I noticed that a car would follow me around around um, around um, Bulawayo, and then my phone was making strange noises, which which I when I spoke to somebody told me that it was it was bugged. Um, but then I was travelling with the Southern Africa Trans Forum. I was, I was hardly ever in Zimbabwe. Um, so I went away August, September. I got back home in October. And in the space of two weeks, my home was broken into twice. Um, the first time, I wasn't home and it was completely trashed. Nothing was taken. So it was, uh, to me, a form of, of intimidation. Uh, the second time, I was home and I was physically assaulted by, 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 by four men. You were beaten in your bed and one of them said you were messing with the wrong people. That's correct. That's correct, yeah. So, um, I mean, what what conclusion could I come to other than this had something to do with my with my with my case, with my having of stood course. up stood up of to course. the government of, of, of Zimbabwe. Um, and then a day or two days later, because I was I was I was coming I was coming to New York for a meeting with Outright Action International to uh, we were we were looking at some legislation which is going before the United Nations. Uh, that was a Tuesday. The Sunday, I bumped into that same man that had me arrested in 2014, and he, he like was so surprised to see that I was like still walking around, I was still alive. And he said, "I wonder why are you still, you know, why are you still here? Why, you know, why are you still alive?" You know, and he was shouting at me. So I walked up and I got into my car and I left. Then I came up to um, to New York for that meeting, and then I went to Geneva for the w, uh, to um, Argentina for the W Path conference. I went back to Africa, but I went to South Africa for for two weeks of of, of meetings. I went home to Bulawayo for one day to like literally unpack and repack, and then I came back to New York for the advocacy week um, beginning of December with Outright Action International. Um, when I was here, I got a phone call from my finance manager of the organization that, that of treats that I started and she said that um, three um, men had been to the office in in an unmarked white car and indicating that they were they were government agents they were looking for me they wanted my itinerary and they said that when I returned back home I would I was wanted for questioning uh, by the president's office. Um, when I heard that, I decided no, it really, I couldn't, um, having been through what I'd been through in October, like two months prior, I didn't think it would be wise for me to go back home and still be alive to speak right. to you today. And when you, and when you talk about the president, I mean, you had Robert Mugabe all those yes. years who described gay people in general as worse than dogs. And we had pigs. a, a pic, the yeah. picture of Mugabe there. Yes. And then the new president, uh, Menengagwa, yes. uh, actually, uh, his party reached out and during the transition or before the election to try to get LGBT people to vote, but things have not yeah. gotten better. Yeah, so what happened was they reached out to an organization called GALS, the Gays and Lesbians of Zimbabwe, who are based in Harare. And um, I think the person who reached out to them was, was he was, a, he was a party official and he had a meeting with, with the director of GALS and, you know, wanted to know, you know, what, what was um, GALS' feeling on um, on the elections and you know how would they vote and would they vote and you know and 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 they basically said that said that they needed they needed the vote they needed our vote. Um, they, after that happened, uh, girls, um, they organised a a press conference of all the leaders of the LGBT organisations in Zimbabwe. So there were ten of us, including you, including myself. Um, so there were ten of us that are ten of us that are, that, are, that that had that attended this press conference. It's online actually, and my and my my statements are online at, at what I said. Um, and we basically 
voiced our skepticism at how genuine um, we yeah, felt. Yeah, I would think so. We felt um, that the, the, the ruling party had been at reaching out to us. Yeah. And then also, um, I had my own concerns. Uh, for example, we had there was a, a young trans woman from, from our city who, when she tried to go and register to vote, was treated horrendously at the at the the, the election um, the, um, the election uh, registration uh, uh, station. So yeah, so well, we had this conversation with, with, with uh, among ourselves, and we we gave we gave a a, a, um, a statement to the press where we said that um, you know we highlighted that in the past the ruling party or the government had been known to use the LGBT as scapegoats when they were when they were campaigning because they were we were always sure those mentioned happens here as too. pigs and dogs yeah, yeah. so um, so we had this conversation with the with the, with the with the, with the with the press of Zimbabwe, and there was there were the independent newspapers, and there were also the government newspapers that were there. So the independent, we have we have independent press, and we have um, the state press. Mm -hmm. So they were there as well. So that's that's what happened at that um, so, at that juncture. So you didn't go back when you realized that you really were in terrible danger. Yes. You stayed yes. here, and shockingly really shockingly the united states government has granted you asylum yes, yes, uh, this is uh, probably because yeah. you didn't come from central america yes i think that could be it and <laughs> also you know it, and i was I I, I I i couldn't believe it myself um so i i i arrived in in the united states on november 28th um pardon me and then i filed for asylum by december 27th um and was granted by February 15th. So it was exact, exactly, Amazing. Six, exactly six weeks from the date of, of filing to date of being granted. Um, but I think it also may have something to do with the strength of my case. Uh, well, sure. It a lot of documentation a lot in of the documentation. press. There's a lot of, a lot of us is online. You're a prominent person yes. uh, in Zimbabwe. Yes. And, and I was also very prominent in the United States. Yes, um, exactly. We, in the activist, activist circle. But we see people all the time, uh, you know, I think in particular of a trans woman from Honduras who came here, was held in custody, was not granted asylum, was sent back and was killed. Yes, I know. And that's a very sad story. Yeah. And um, we see the Trump administration at the UN and another any kind of an international agreement they want to get transgender anything to do with yes. gender even out of there they don't yes. want to have anything to do with human rights yes, yes. so congratulations yes. on that Thank you. and um, you're now tell us you're working at Casa Ruby in Washington which yes. is a great local organization you are the director of HIV AIDS prevention and outreach there that's correct so I have known Ruby Corrado that's the name of the director right. um, for many years I first met Ruby in um, 2012 when I came to attend the, the International AIDS Conference in Washington DC. Mm -hmm. uh, I stayed on for on, on, on holiday on vacation for about four weeks after the conference uh, and I stayed with a friend of mine who, not, who I'm, who's now looking over who I'm staying with now um, in my transitional period. Um, so when I was here in 2012, I, I reached out to Ruby and I went to, I went to go and see her at an organization and you know, we, we became friends ever mm -hmm. since then. <clears throat> We've kept in touch. Um, I've seen her on, on, the, on the circuit, so to speak. So you yes. know, we have all these, these... We're familiar with the circuit. Yeah, yeah, so I've seen, her, I've seen her on the circuit. So when she found, when she read on Facebook that I was in Washington, D.C., um, she reached out to me. We had dinner, and uh, yeah, and I was offered a job. So I'm working at um, Casa Ruby as the HIV um, prevention and outreach uh, uh, director. A yeah. happy ending to a very yes, grim it story. It is. It is a happy ending. And uh, you know, and and last night, for example, when I when I spoke, when I made the, the one comment, and I said how bad um, the Zimbabwe government was in its in its uh, lack of lack, lack of human rights. And its impunity for laws and and um, its its fiscal mismanagement and all these things. One of the people in the audience shouted, "Oh, but so is the United States!" But as I haven't seen that 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 side personally. Come back in a year and yeah, tell us I what you think. I haven't seen that personally as as an individual. Um, I certainly have at Casa Ruby. We um, so Casa Ruby is an organisation that runs. It has three. Um, drop-in centers and shelters in Washington DC. Mm -hmm. So we have the, the big one where I am, it's the headquarters, and we have Casa Ruby uh, 2 and 3. And at these three um, um, 
um, centres, we house between 50 and 70 people That's a lot. per day. Yeah. That's great. We feed them and we house them. Yeah. Uh, we also provide immigration services, we sort of social security, um, the HIV um, program which I, which I manage mm -hmm. looks at um, how do we address um, the scourge of HIV as it affects young LGBTQ people and, and mainly immigrants. Yes, yes, and they are and homeless at people. particularly highest risk. That's well, great. we could talk uh, for about six more days, <laughs> but uh, we have run out of time. Yeah. So, uh, I, you know, your story is just amazing and uh, we're really happy that you have landed where you've landed. Uh, and Casa Ruby is growing like crazy. I remember when it yes, was started. It, it is, yeah. So one of, one of the plans is, and I'm not sure if I can say this, I'm sure I can say this on camera. So one of the plans is um, Casa Ruby wants to, wants to export the model of what it actually does. So I was... Uh, Ruby identified me to, to run what's known as the Institute mm -hmm. and part of the Institute is this HIV, HIV program. Um, so what I will do, or what the, the vision is, is that I will take the Casa Ruby model to internationally with Great. my international experience in Europe and Africa. Don't go back to Zimbabwe. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I, I, and I kind of can't go back for, for can't go back for five years anyway. So no, okay. there's, there's no chance of that but happening. But come back here anytime. Thank We'd like so to hear much. more about it. And Thank you, Ricky. You all, we will tell our viewers about it in our email. If they sign yes. up for our email, we'll tell them more about your group. Great. Thank okay. you very much for Thank being you very with much. us. Thank, Thank you for Ricky. having me. Uh, Thank our you. pleasure. Thank and you. Congratulations Thank you. on your uh, Sousa Award. Oh, yeah. thank you. Thank you very much. Well, that was quite a story. It is. Uh, you know, I, I, <laughs> I really hope she doesn't go back to Zimbabwe anytime soon, but man, what a great activist. And in terms of uh, asylum claims and from people from Central America, we, we have something positive to report, uh, that uh, 10 uh, transgender people from Honduras at a, uh, who were released from a, a detention center in the United States in Texas. They were part of the 80-member LGBT group that was moving as part of the caravan. Yeah. 30 trans women presented themselves at the border in Tijuana. Uh, they experienced discrimination in the caravan. And there were 20 remaining uh, that for court dates. Immigration well, judges... Well, some have been refused already, but 20 either waiting or refused. They were abused at home, they were abused in the caravan, and they were abused in detention yes. in the U.S. Yes, and immigration judges have only approved 35% of asylum pleas in 2018, a record low, and that's obviously the anti-immigrant policy of the administration. Well, right. the administration, there, let's go, there's a little segue to the administration. I am uh, particularly appalled this week by what the State Department did. We told you a little while ago about uh, two married gay men, one from the U.S., one from Israel. They were married abroad, but they are married legally married uh, U.S. married people. Uh, they had twins born, twin boys born of a surrogate uh, using each of their sperm. So one test... One's American, one's Israeli. According to the U.S. State Department. That is not, No, 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 I fact, mean the, the, hus the, 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 the husbands. The husbands, yes. yes. Uh, but the State Department only wants to give citizenship it's, uh, it's to disgusting. the child uh, born of the U.S. Uh, husband's uh, sperm. In fact, uh, we haven't tested the other twin, and uh, this is disgusting. A court has already said that they are uh, both parents, and the kids are both entitled to U.S. citizenship, and the State Department is now appealing that ruling and saying, no, we do not want to give citizenship to the other twin. I mean, we do not want to recognize this marriage. We do not want to give it uh, usual marriage rights with uh, parentage. It's just unbelievable. One million species are on the verge of extinction, and this is the kind of trouble that you want to make for the, those Ugh. of us who are left? I mean, uh, the, you know, and we have climate change now. I mean, just this week, this just this week in Trump outrages, uh, the, the, the conscience rule Ugh. was issued, uh, and it basically allows medical providers to discriminate on their beliefs, especially against LGBTQ people, but also against minority religions. And not just on their religious beliefs, also on their moral beliefs. You yeah. You've got a wide range there of outs for uh, treating people 
uh, equally. You want to talk about morality? This, I well, mean, this comes out of the uh, Health and Human Services Office for Civil Rights. Oh, yeah, which is run by an anti-gay uh, bigot. Uh, I mean, you know, the, the, the Trump issued another pardon this week for a former army lieutenant who had served five years for murdering an Iraqi prisoner in yes. 2008, shot him dead and then claimed self-defense. Took him out in the desert and shot him dead and claimed self-defense. No, I mean, you, you've been, everybody's been seeing the, the spectacle of them defying all subpoenas uh, from the administration, the total breakdown <sighs> of uh, separation of powers. Or law. Nice to see 600 former federal prosecutors signing a letter saying yep. that there's a lot of obstruction of justice in that. Yep. And nice to see Lawrence Tribe, who wrote a book cautioning about impeachment. That's what the book was about, saying no more time for caution. You know, caution is cowardice at this point. Caution is a, and cowardice becomes betrayal of the Constitution. Well, whether it's uh, taking them out legally or taking them out by a vote, I just cannot wait for the end of this administration. Well, we still have federal judges at the lower level in Oregon, Washington, and California who have struck down Trump's attack on Planned Parenthood and the anti-abortion gag rules, so that's positive. All right, well, uh, in, uh, in a little better news, uh, well, temporarily, in the House of Representatives Judiciary Committee, when they are not uh, uh, trying to cross-examine these people, they managed to pass the Equality Act by a vote of 22 to 10. Those All the Republicans voted against it. Uh, I'm uh, I'm shocked that they only have 10 Republicans on the committee. Yeah. Uh, there are 240 co-sponsors of the bill. It includes three Republicans. Yeah. 218 votes are needed for yeah. passage. So it's going to be... Now, they, they say the Republicans could try to thwart it through a motion to recommit, forcing a vote on an amendment that the majority would not otherwise allow to come up. That could stall it. Well, we've uh, seen how they're stalling. They're stalling everything. They stalled the this in initial passage of the bill in the committee. Uh, Representative Sensenbrenner, Republican of Wisconsin, forced a full reading of the bill, 27 pages. It took 30 minutes to read, they but evidently the clerk was a hero. She just went, boom, went right through it. They really hate us. They, well, but the American people We don't. really hate them. A, a, a Quinnipiac poll, they asked the question, should employers not be able to fire someone because of sexual orientation or sexual identity? 92% said they should not be able to fire them. 92%. Yep. You don't and get 92% yet, for anything. And yet they persist. Well, they're certainly persisting in Texas, where 23 anti-LGBT bills are pending. Uh, yeah, but they also got some uh, discussion of a couple of pro-LGBT bills, yes, too. Yes, they had a hearing. Uh, and meanwhile, in Tennessee, the, the slate of hate, as we call it, of bills proposed there, has been deferred to next year, mostly because businesses, those corporations we like to talk about, uh, and celebrities and, uh, you know, sports teams objected to the bills and said, really, you are going to become the state of hate if you pass the slate of hate. Do you think they want to pass it be uh, during an election year to boost their chances? Well, uh, we'll see. They did pass one uh, of the bills uh, that says uh, no indecent exposure in bathrooms or locker rooms. It's an anti-trans bill. Yes, it is. And Iowa, uh, Governor Kim Reynolds there, Republican, signed into law two bills. One, exempting Medicaid from covering transgender medical procedures. And this is in a state that has transgender protections in the civil rights law. So they actually had to amend the civil rights law to do this, essentially. Relentless and shameless. And the other one is about banishing Planned Parenthood from being involved in sex education in public schools. And then, of course, we have the lovely new abortion bill in Georgia, yep. where uh, you basically you can't have an abortion after your six weeks pregnant and many 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 people do not know that they are pregnant right. at six weeks uh, so uh, in the Pre presidential yes. politics area uh, one development this last week is that mayor Pete Buttigieg and his husband Chaston ended up on the cover of Time magazine American Gothic <laughs> Now, it's Sports Illustrated that's a curse, so I think you're okay if you're yeah. on the cover of well, Time. Well, uh, Pete was speaking in Dallas, and he was interrupted four times by protesters shouting, Repent! And marriage is between a man and a woman. And he responded, 
the moment I pack my bags for Afghanistan to defend that man's freedom of speech, you know, so he's, but Beto O'Rourke defended him uh, against this, trying to defend the honor of Texas, yeah, which is tough to, tired of tough to def you know defend. Who, you know who's yelling at him? Randall Terry. Oh, really? This is Randall Terry running around the country after uh, Pete Buttigieg. I, I was a little wary when I heard Pete, when he said he was doing a shooting in Afghanistan, that he wrapped himself literally in American flag. But There are a lot of reasons to have qualms, but, yeah. uh, you know, as we say, anybody but Trump. Okay. All right. Uh, and then there's a... a oh. Representative Brian Sims, uh, state rep in mm -hmm. Pennsylvania, first out gay yeah. rep. He's in trouble well, for uh, yelling at anti-abortion activists. He took film of them and he said, who is this woman? Identify her. I'd like to go to her house and demonstrate against her because what, are they, what they're doing to these women trying to exercise yes. their freedom their freedom rights. Well, I don't terrible. think that's a terrible thing. Uh, that, you know, that has been going on for decades. No, I mean, I don't think it's yeah. terrible that he's saying, you want to demonstrate against us? We'll demonstrate against you at your home well he got a lot of pushback for it uh, because his well he his, offered a hundred dollars for anybody identifying his her. manner of speaking also was a little rough so he ended up apologizing oh okay <laughs> well uh, okay uh, uh, but they were also you know they held that big anti-abortion rally in Times Square last weekend yes. and they were uh, they had three stages they were broadcasting an anti-abortion film on the jumbotrons in Times Square. They've got a lot of money, a lot of money. We do. And this film, uh, unplanned, is being shown uh, in sort of private bookings in thousands of theaters around the country. It's a dramatic film dramatizing somebody who turned against abortion who had yeah. worked in a hospital yeah. or something. Yeah, and abortion rights are really under fire and uh, are, are in a lot indeed. of trouble. They are indeed. Yeah. Um, Arizona. Now, we told you about how they had a law that you can't talk about gay stuff in schools, and there was a lawsuit about it, and uh, that made the government back off and change the law. Yes. But we wanted to show you a picture of 13-year-old Santi Sabalos, Sabios, a seventh grader uh, who was the plaintiff in the N National Center for Lesbian Rights suit about this. Um, uh, Non-binary, trans, 13-year-old. Co constantly bullied in school, segregated from peers during sex education, and an extremely brave young person. Thank you, Santi. Okay. Oh, uh, good news from Ohio, where the congressional map was declared unconstitutional. Yay. That gave the Republicans a 12 to 4 advantage. But the Supreme Court of the United States, that's one of the big decisions that we are awaiting this year. Bad news from California, where a uh, couple of gay men in West Hollywood uh, dropped dead instantly uh, from, it is believed, fentanyl-laced meth or cocaine. Wow. Uh, and they're saying that this is uh, widely out there, and people really, it, it's out there to such ex an extent that the L.A. Uh, LGBT Center has a supply of like 5,000 fentanyl testing strips. So if you're using these drugs, you really ought to be testing them before you use them because this stuff will kill you right away. Wow. There is no coming back from this. Wow. So is that anybody is a being warning. charged with murder for selling it? I don't know. In uh, uh, Denver, trans woman Amber Nicole was severely beaten outside a, uh, a bar there at, uh, in the morning. and. Face and jaw broken, nerve damage, uh, and the police are investigating, but uh, terrible. Uh, the lieutenant governor of Guam was in New York for the conference of the International Gay and Lesbian Travel Association to invite LGBT visitors to Guam, <laughs> pointing out that it was a friendly spot and uh, he wants everybody to come there to vacation. Well, and t tell us about the uh, lesbian EMS chief. Ah, Lillian Bonsignore is the first woman and first out LGBT person to run a major uh, service in New York. She is the new head of the fire department's EMS service with 4,500 EMS workers working under her. Uh, she is terrific, and congratulations to Lillian on her promotion. Everybody's very, very happy about it. Now, you probably think of New York, and especially Manhattan, where we live, as a fairly liberal place, 
But the deputy borough president under our friend Gail Brewer, the borough president, is Matthew Washington, who constantly tweets support for anti-LGBT and anti-choice preachers. I was shocked by this. Identified himself (laughs) as the deputy borough president on his feed, now says, oh, I'll take that down. These are just my private views. Promotes focus on the family. Yeah, and that abortion rally in Times Square. And Gail just says, well, those aren't my views. But I tell you, I'm a little nervous with someone of this, uh, you know. It's a conundrum. A- it's a conundrum. You've got someone in a public job and they express these views. Uh, what are your... Well, public employees do have a, a great deal of protection. But uh, at, the, at, at a high, you know, for their uh, certainly certain certain jobs. But when you're out there representing things, I mean, is how can we trust you to do the right thing for LGBT people and women and others if this is what you're harboring? Well, and there the other side would say, how can we trust you to do the right thing for our Be- people? Because if, if you, you check our this. feeds, we're for justice for all. <laughs> That's but how. they don't agree that we're for justice for all. <sighs> they think we're killing babies. Uh, And promoting perversion. And thus the civil war in the United States. On the other hand, we won a battle this week uh, of sorts. Uh, We told you about how Brazil's anti-LGBT fascist president, Bolsonaro, uh, was going to be honored in New York with Mike Pompeo at a dinner that was going to be at the Marriott Marquis, Marquis where Tootsie is playing on the 14th of May. And, uh, and uh, Maybe that's why he's canceled. And he is not going to come. It sounds like the dinner is still going forward, the Brazilian-American Chamber of Commerce Gala. So maybe we still have to protest. Well, certainly Pompeo is there. Well, and uh, my, you know, how hard is it to uh, beam him in from uh, Brazil? He could easily be on a live feed and, from there. And Citibank is still uh, a sponsor of this. Some, well, some, here's some the deal. corporations dropped out. Yeah, but here's, here's the list. Delta, Bain Capital, my, Mitt Romney's old These company. These are the good guys. And the Financial Times withdrew their sponsorship of this dinner, but Citigroup, uh, J.P. Morgan, Morgan Stanley, the Bank of America, and United Health Group have continued their sponsorship. What about Chase, our bank? I have them on the bad list. I don't have them on any list, so right. I don't know. Okay. But I, I am, at, you know, I, I hope to be proved wrong. But the fact that he's not coming to New York doesn't mean anything right. to me if he's still being live streamed. And Pompeo is worth. Uh, protesting, who said, uh, let the uh, Arctic uh, ice caps melt, we'll have uh, new trade routes. Uh, Staying in New York for a second, in Brooklyn, some sad news. Former city council member Lou Fiddler uh, has died at 62 years old. I I knew him very well. He was chair of the Youth Services Committee, devoted himself totally to the cause of homeless youth, particularly LGBTQ youth, who he said made up 40% of that population. His advocacy was used against him. This was a South Brooklyn district, a very conservative district, yep. and it didn't phase him one bit. He Lou. was a hero. He was. Straight guy, great ally. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, and uh, uh, I don't know if this belongs here or in entertainment news, but Scrabble has approved the use of some new words, gender, queer, cisgender, transphobic, Z, Z, E. But here's my question. You only get, what, like uh, seven letters on a Scrabble thing? How are you gonna spell uh, transphobic with seven <laughs> letters? Or gender queer? I guess you would add oh, letters right. if you, to- If somebody did phobic, you could you, do transphobic yes. and you could get extra points. Yes, or gender and you could add queer. You can, but really, you that, know. That's true. <laughs> a couple of other losses I want to mention. A guy named Tim Fisher uh, out at, in St. Paul, Minnesota, uh, straight ally in Lutheran's Concerned, has died at 54. He felt a duty to stand by gay and lesbian friends, hurt and humiliated by the church. And he encouraged congregations to be reconciling in Christ. That's the phrase they use for gay people. And then Rachel Held Evans, a Christian writer yeah. who challenged the evangelical establishment, has died at the age of 37. After a severe reaction to antibiotics, she advanced full inclusion of LGBT people in churches, and she had to leave the evangelical church, even though she was a big believer, Mm -hmm. because she said she was exhausted by the culture wars, as are we all. Well, you've always said, uh, don't waste your time with people who are not going to change their minds. That's a quote from Bayard Rustin. Don't waste your time with the 10% of people who will never agree with you. Mm -hmm. Of course, now it's 40%. (laughs) Yes, it is. Or at least 35. It varies. All right. right, International news? Yes, please. All right. Well, Cuba 
The government has just canceled their annual pride parade. It's the 12th or 13th annual parade. Now, this is the thing known as Mariela's March, uh, run by Mariela Castro. Cuban uh, conga against homophobia and transphobia and is the name of it. This has always been controversial because Mariela, a uh, daughter of uh, Raul, uh, niece of Fidel, uh, runs an organization called Senesex and has been pro-LGBT for many years, but the independent LGBT activists have always said this was simply window dressing for a repressive regime that was still being mean to dissidents and activists and particularly LGBT. So she canceled this march this year and now the, the, the independent activists are saying, yeah, see, and, and she's really, the government's being influenced by the evangelical church, yes. which are the ones that I, got marriage equality yes. taken out of the new constitution. I mean, you know, uh, we used to be oppressed by them when they were godless communists, and now they're communists who are pro promoting the uh, religious right Yes, down there. And, and the, they're the ones who, you know, put the kibosh on... Uh, Marriage. Well, they do, uh, you know, some things in Cuba are very progressive and wonderful. Yes, and medical care. Education. Yes. Uh, but then there, there's a lot of uh, human rights violations. Right. So, and they're also reacting to some extent to the fact that Trump is reimposing a lot of uh, sanctions against Cuba. And Hurting them economically. Yes, and that's a bad thing. Well, uh, Brunei, we've been telling you about so Brunei. So the independent activists yes. in Cuba may do their own march this weekend. We will let you know if anything we've happens. We've been telling there. you about about Brunei and their law that uh, they've instituted where you can be stoned to death for being gay or for even for adultery, I think. So the Sultan declared a moratorium on the death penalty, but the law remains on the books, so. And you can still whip lesbians. Oh. Can... Uh, in bad ways. <sighs> Terrible. <laughs> well, uh, 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 they are, they do have the death penalty for homosexuality in Saudi Arabia, and they had a, you know, we, you all read about this mass execution, 37 people uh, were killed. Five were linked to homosexual acts. Uh, most, now, most of the people executed, they said it was terror-related. That just meant they were part of a, a religious minority. Uh, but one of these kids, one of them was 16 at the time of arrest. One of them was crucified. One was allegedly confessed to sex with four others and executed. Beheaded. Our good friend, Saudi Arabia. Uh, and Brunei, you know, that's that's more lip service. If they want, yeah. when, they, when the pressure dies down, yeah. They'll go right back to doing whatever they want to do. Yeah, we're still this not saying at your hotel, Sultan. Yeah, this is all just an attempt to get out from under the, uh, the economic pressure. Russia. Uh, Russia. Well, in Chechnya, they put out a new uh, report analyzing the arrests of gay men and, and found new waves of that and new beatings and torture and I humiliation. I read this whole story of what they did to these four guys in the latest wave, and it is unbelievably mm -hmm. vicious. And it's all about... You're going to tell us the names of others, or we're going to we're going to get you. Now you can go to HRW Human Rights Watch. What does that Dot say? Org. Is that, is, is that say HRC? Is that say? It should be HRW. HRW.org. HRW.org. Uh, that's Human, Human Rights, Rights Watch. Watch. I will put the link in our email to the. Take down that Chiron, take please. Take down that Chiron. There, there it is. It's it. corrected. Fixed it. Thank All right. you. Anyway, but I mean, uh, what they, what the, it's just unbelievable. And, you know, and the, the, the investigation of the last wave, which was intense, mm -hmm. uh, produced absolutely nothing. Mm. All right. Uh, on a few lighter notes, uh, in the United Kingdom, they have a television show called Blind Date. They set people up and they send them on some trip. Well, they set up a couple of men, uh, gay men, for a date, and they sent them two to- Two bisexual men they two put bisexual, together. Two bisexual, thank you. And uh, they sent them on a date to the lovely Caribbean island <laughs> of St. Lucia. Where you could get 10 years in prison for homosexuality. <laughs> And they said they were... They were warned. They were tense throughout the whole trip. <laughs> but the good side is it has drawn attention to the anti-LGBT laws yeah. there. And it's, and well, tourism was already down because of this. Uh, the producers of Blind Date oh, have apologized, <laughs> as well they should. What will Ireland do with the virulently anti-LGBT pastor Stephen Anderson? Uh, this is a guy oh, who appla he yeah. applauded the Pulse Massacre. He is barred from many countries in the West, 
including most in Europe who are under this, uh, 26 of them, but Ireland is not part of this group. He's due in Ireland on May 26th, so there's a campaign to block him. Wow. Uh, he's been barred from African countries, too, I think. Well, staying with the UK, in Scotland, they are putting together the 2021 census, and they've decided to add voluntary, voluntary questions on sexual orientation and gender identity because they want to gather evidence to provide support and protection for Scotland's transgender population. Now, this is something we've talked about in this country a lot too. Should we put questions like that on the census or shouldn't we? Would it drive people away? Would people answer it? Would they trust the government with that information? Would the government somehow manipulate that information? Scotland seems to be a better place to ask yeah. those questions. I say if Scotland uh, does separate from uh, um, uh, Britain, uh, it will become the richest per capita country in the world. Wow. Yeah. I've always liked Scotland. Uh, in Poland, in Warsaw, a female activist uh, put up a poster and, oh, and yeah. wheat pasted it around town in Warsaw. At, you know the, uh, the black Madonna. Yeah, uh, classic picture with a halo around the Madonna and the baby Jesus. And this activist uh, painted a rainbow flag. Uh, in the halo portion. Looks very pretty. It does look pretty, and uh, it has caused quite a controversy. Not since in Rudy Warsaw. Giuliani uh, <laughs> tried to take funding from the Brooklyn Museum for using a piece of dung on a painting of the uh, Madonna. Dried elephant dung. Yes. Which also was a very beautiful painting. Wow, yes. was that gorgeous. I, I went. I yeah. went to the protest against Giuliani there. Uh, so uh, this, uh, the activist who did this uh, was uh, detained, uh, questioned for five hours, and if she is prosecuted, she could face wow. two years in prison for offending religious belief. Well, when we, when we go down that road, you're... Exactly, we're but this has, this has provoked a protest by hundreds of people in Warsaw. Good. There, there's a lot of controversy these days in Poland over LGBT rights. It's become a real hotbed of, uh, of uh, The right wing uses discussion. it against us and yeah. we use it for and it. And we fight back. In uh, AIDS news. Yes. A big European study of a thousand gay male couples where one is HIV positive, the other is not, who have sex without condoms. Uh, and if the one of, uh, who's HIV positive is adherent to drugs, there are no cases of HIV transmission in, 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 among any of them. It really push, puts this issue to bed. If you are adherent, you are not going to transmit HIV. But you really have to be adherent, and you have to be tested to uh, find out if you are, in fact, undetectable in your virus level, because that is what is the point at which yes. you are not transmissible. Uh, a few of the guys in this study did get infected, but they were fooling around outside, and they could tell from the strain of the virus yeah. that that happens. Seven of them, yeah, <laughs> out of the thousand, yeah. Well, well that's going to happen. And we just like to inform you that May is National Masturbation Month. Oh, I have so no idea. Celebrate as you will. Okay. All right. May. Yes, you may. <laughs> In New York, they've adopted new eligibility requirements for ADAP. Uh, no more asset test. Annual income level is now up to 500% of the federal this poverty level. This is the AIDS drug assistance program where if you uh, need help paying for your drugs, the state government will pay. So if you're single and you make up to $62,450 a year, you're eligible. And the program is now called Uninsured Care Programs. And Canada is reducing the time a gay man has to wait after sexual relations to give blood from 15 months to three months. Oh, well, that's better. Uh, but the re one reason the ADAP program has to expand its eligibility is because of the prices of these drugs, which are uh, often outrageous. Yeah. All right, moving on to entertainment news. How did you enjoy the Met Gala this year? The well... <laughs> This is at the Metropolitan Museum. I didn't attend. Well, you know, the, the exhibit there, the fashion exhibit is called Camp Notes on Fashion, after Susan Sontag's Notes on Camp. 
And so everybody got dressed up and tried to be campy, uh, including Billy Porter. There's Billy Porter from Pose. In, in kinky boots, in wings and gold and uh, just sparkling all over. And then Janelle Monet. Now that is spectacular. Is it camp? Well, that's the question. <laughs> that's a Christian Siriano uh, creation with several hats on her head and uh, blinking eyes. She had a little purse that was the other eye. Uh, quite stunning, whatever it is. But as I look through hundreds of pictures of these people. And we are going to send you a link to hundreds of pictures. And if you sign up for our email, we'll yeah. give you the link. It's all on HuffPost.com and the New York Times website has them too and probably everyone else. It's quite a collection of outfits. It's a, quite a range. But as I looked through it, I thought, what is camp outfits? Uh, you know, I can I can look at something. I can say Dynasty in its original uh, iteration yeah. was camp, campy. But uh, to try to figure out what to wear that is camp, I well, think, is a tougher question. Susan Sontag said camp is love of the unnatural, of artifice and exaggeration. Well, there was plenty of that at the Met Ball. And then, of course, someone said, all this money spent on this, and where are the proceeds going? To the Met Costume Institute. Right. It would be nice if it went to, you know, some homeless thing. youth or yes, something. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah but right. nonetheless. Well, a lot of, uh, certainly a lot of those people do a lot yes, uh, they for, do. for LGBT and, charities. And, and I could just look at Janelle Monet all day anyway. <clears throat> okay. Uh, but, uh, but it was quite spectacular really it was more spectacular i think than any of the ones they had before because it called for some outrageous creativity okay i have broken down and started to watch gentleman jack on hbo about ann lister a, uh, a, a lesbian uh, who uh, landowner in the 19th century it's 1830s a it's uh, england it's tr a true story it's based on her diaries she was Talk about camp. She was just a Casanova. Uh, that's uh, Saran Jones and Sophie Rundle as the love interest. It is amazing. She Broken takes charge down. of her estate. You're, you're lucky to have had it. I am. It. I am. Yeah. But you know, we're so busy putting this show And you together. haven't seen the third episode, which is I the best don't, yet. Don't, 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 don't <laughs> tell me. I'm going to watch it tonight on that demand. That's all I'm going to tell but, you. Uh, it, it really, I mean, she, you know, uh, some of the women that she's in love with you can't take it. They can't take living this way uh, well, in the 1830s. Sure, of course. And they, you know, they rebel and they marry men. But uh, this was created by Sally Wainwright, and I think it's pretty terrific. The two most exciting, sexy lesbian shows on TV now: Gentleman Jack on HBO, Killing Eve on BBC America or AMC. It's running right. simultaneously on both. They are both. So funny, so sexy, great. they're really great. Uh, we're going to get Patience and Sarah back as an opera. They're going to do it at the Hunter Opera Theater, May 9th and 10th. That's coming up right this weekend. Yes. Uh, we're going to give you the link in our email, but it's the Hunter Opera Theater, Hunter College Opera Theater. Well, they're, they're doing the, it at the, the K, K Playhouse. Playhouse at yeah. Hunter. And, and Patience and Sarah is also a true story. It's based on the Isabel Miller novel, uh, but it's uh, but that was done on a true story of uh, 19th century, I think, uh, uh, U.S. Uh, upstate New York uh, to women in love. And uh, I've been following this opera for some years since it was first created uh, some years ago, and it's really terrific if you're possibly interested, I'd really recommend well, it. Well, speaking of opera, playhouse. the New York City Opera is going to premiere the Stonewall Opera, with, uh, written by Ian Bell and Mark Campbell, June 21st to 28th. But they're previewing it in Bryant Park on June 12th at 6 o'clock. That's really? right behind the library. Okay. Yeah, Stonewall the Opera. And I have sad news to report. The gay guy on American Idol got cut. No. Jeremiah, gone. He, he was in the top six. They eliminated two. They saved one, not him. So, oh. so and, he's uh, gone. And Avenue Q is going to be gone uh, after 15 years on Broadway and off Broadway continuously. It's now at the New World stages, but they're closing it on uh, May 26th. They held the Billboard Music Awards in the last week or so, and one of the winners for top rock artist, well, this was controversial in itself, yes. that Imagine Dragons won. But nonetheless, their leader, Dan Reynolds, gave an acceptance speech that was all about blasting conversion therapy. They're 
from Utah, uh, Mormon, and he has been on quite a crusade for some years now. And to... he spoke explicitly about how conversion therapy leads to uh, LGBT suicides mm -hmm. and that and depression, and uh, that our kids have triple the rate of suicide, and uh, only 34, 34 states don't have any law against it. So. And uh, the GLAAD Media Awards were held last weekend, oh, yeah? but they will be aired on Logo this Sunday night, a condensed version, I guess. Madonna spoke, so if you're interested in that, uh, on Logo Sunday night, the GLAAD Media Awards. And there's the first Latinx LGBTQI Arts Festival uh, in New York City called Fuerza Fest, May 8th through the 19th. Uh, you can go to Fuerza, F-U-E-R-Z-A, fest.org, and we'll provide that link in our email as well. Now, what's this Terrence McNally thing on PBS on June 14th? Yeah, it's called Terrence McNally, Every Act of Life. Uh, it is a part of a, the American Masters series. Is it a biography? Oh, yeah, it's a documentary about him. Yeah. Uh, uh, Terrence McNally has, uh, he's 80 180 now, anyway. Really? I saw him at a panel discussion a few weeks ago. He looked like he was about 40. Well, maybe Tom Curtihy, his producer <laughs> of, uh, husband, husband, is keeping him young. Yeah. Uh, because his work has been produced on Broadway 25 times. <laughs> and a revival of Frankie and Johnny and the Claire de Lune is in previews now with Audrey McDonald and Michael Shannon. I took my youngest brother to see the Ritz when yeah. it was <laughs> about decades a ago. About, about a bathhouse. Yes. On Broadway, right? Yes. So I think I was fairly newly out and a little uh, enthusiastic about my new life, and uh, I wanted to share it, and I think he was a little taken aback. <laughs> oh, it, was a, it was a very light comedy. It was. Uh, with gangsters and everything. Yeah, but, it was. Uh, I remember years ago. I don't know if this is going to get into the documentary, but they asked Terrence, why did you get into, pl why did you get into theater? He said, to meet guys. <laughs> That's what got him started. <laughs> That's such a common story. By the way, did we mention the trans opera singer baritone Lucia Lucas? Making, yes, a uh, long we, time we ago. Talk, we did, yeah. All right. Uh, and uh, country singer Cameron Hawthorne uh, has come out in a new video. He did a video called Dancing in the Living Room, and it shows different, it's a nice uh, country song. Uh, it shows different couples together, a, a, a two women couple, an older straight couple, uh, and you work your way through yeah. the song, and at the end, he goes and meets up with his male partner right. and dances. Dancing in the living room or yeah, something, yeah. right? Yeah, as I just said, yes. dancing in the no, living room. No, I mean, that's yeah. the title of the yes. whole thing. Yes, yes. Right. Uh, but it's kind of charming, and you can find that on YouTube, Dancing but in the you Living can't Room find the photos of uh, Jerry Falwell Jr., uh, you know, who's the head of Liberty uh, University, yes. the horrible guy, anti-gay, big Trump supporter. He used Michael Cohen as a fixer to get these photos that they're not telling us what's in them, but they're but they're embarrassing photos of a sexual nature. Something that, to do with a pool boy. Uh, a pool boy who they paid $1.8 million to start a business. It's all very murky. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently the photos were destroyed. I wish the pool boy would come forward and give us a little description. I Maybe this is part of what uh, Michael Cohen meant when he said, there's more to tell. <laughs> well, Michael saw the photos and he said, yeah, they're terrible. <laughs> well, that is a great tease at the end of the show. Uh, we will be back, actually... Uh, I'll be back with Rob Shooter next week. That's right. Thank you, Rob, for filling in. I'll be back eventually. Don't worry. Bye. Bye.